For creating basic visuals like a pie chart or a column chart, Excel works great. But when it comes to more advanced visuals like these, it doesn't quite do the job. Even in PowerPoint, it would take you a very long time to design something like this. That's where a free tool called Napkin AI comes in, so let me show you how it works. And no, this isn't a sponsored video, it's just a tool that I think you'll find very useful. Let's get into it. Here's the typical scenario where we have this report that we've been working on, and right now it's just a bunch of text in several paragraphs. It would be nice to get some visuals to make this a bit more digestible. Typically, you would create these visuals in Excel or PowerPoint, but let me show you why Napkin AI might be a better alternative. To get started, you just need to go to this website called napkin.ai and then click on Get Napkin Free to get started and sign up. Once you do the whole process, you should get into the app, which is going to look something like this. As you can see, it's kind of like a Word document or a notebook. Within the top left area, we're going to click on New Napkin to import the report we've just been looking at. We're going to do the Draft with AI option later in the video. For now, let's click on Import from File. And if you want to download this same report that I'm working on, you can actually find it for free in the video description so you can follow along with this scenario. So I'm going to click on Browse here and actually select the right Word doc. Give it a second for it to load. So the report is now inside of Napkin and for specific parts that we want to visualize, I'm just going to separate them a bit. For example, maybe this paragraph right here could be quite good to visualize where we see the trend of the steady decline in battery costs where they go down over time. So you'll notice there's this button on the left hand side. That's the one that we want to click on to generate the visuals. Give it a second there for it to load. And you can see right now, if we scroll down, there's a ton of different visual options that we have. We can keep scrolling to see even more choices. So I quite like this one right here where it represents the trend. So let me click on that once and then it takes me to different styles. So here I can get some that have a background, some that don't. Maybe I want to go for this one. So I'm just going to click on it, settle for it. As you can see with the visual we've created, it has a lot to do with the text, so it's not just a random visual, but in fact, it really represents that trend well, that over time the battery costs are going down. The nice thing about this is that it's fully editable, so I can just click on this visual and make a lot of changes. For example, I can change the different type of header, maybe I want to change the text within it, I just gotta double click for that, and you can see I can make those changes. Same thing goes with the actual visuals, if I click on it, there's these plus and minus signs that basically means that I want to add another one or that I want to remove the current one like that. I can also change specific areas like maybe this label over here. I want it to change to an XL size or change it all the way down to a small size. While those are settings for specific parts, we can also look at more macro settings just by clicking on this center area. Now, if we go to this top part, you can see that we can change the color of everything, even the background color with those borders there. And right here on the right hand side, we have the full background. So I can change this all to green if I want to, for instance. Here I can change the different aspect ratios and also change the styles, which is kind of like a theme in PowerPoint. You can see what that looks like. I'll show you how to export these visuals later, but for now, let's go over some of the other visuals Napkin AI has to offer. So let's suppose lower down in our report, we've got this area right here, which I think make a lot of sense to have as some kind of timeline as we go from 2020 all the way to 2030. So let's click on this generate visual option and see what it comes up with. If I scroll down here, you'll notice that we're starting to get some kind of trend line. So that seems to make quite a lot of sense. You can see maybe this one's slightly more elegant and I can keep scrolling down to see all the different options. Maybe I just wanna go for this one, but if you're not quite convinced, you can always click on the more button or even down below, we can specify a visual. So let's say that I want this as a timeline. So this one says sequential event timeline. Let's try that, see what it looks like. I'm just gonna apply and we should get a few different options specifically for that. Nice, you can see we've got this one right here. That's quite elegant. So let me click on that. I'm happy with the default style too. One final part of the report that I think makes sense to visualize is this paragraph over here with the four stage process that combines all of these things. Let's see what it comes up with. I'm gonna click on generate. And you can see here that it's come up with fairly unique visuals. Maybe I quite like this process filter and you can keep scrolling to see all the other options that it gives us. Let's say I go for this one. I'm just gonna click on it. And right now you can see that all of the text seems to make quite a lot of sense. So we can be quite happy with that. Same thing with the different icons here on the left hand side. 
All right, so we've got all of these visuals, we're happy with them. So the next step is to actually export them. For that, we just need to select on the visual. Let's say I select this particular one. And on the top right, you'll see the export option. When you click on that though, there's actually a lot of different options. The first one, the PNG, is basically an image without a background. So in this case, you're not gonna have that white background. If we go for a vector image, this makes sense if you want to make it a lot bigger or a lot smaller. A PDF is fairly self-explanatory, it's pretty good for printing and sharing. And finally, we have a PowerPoint, which makes sense if you want to edit it further. Let's go ahead and click on that. We also have the choice of going for a dark mode, like you can see right here, or going for a light one. Let me go for light for now and click on download. The download is now complete, so let's see what it looks like in PowerPoint. Right now, if we click on any of these parts, you can see that they're all separate shapes. That basically means that we can easily animate these. So for instance, I can click on these bottom ones, head over to animations and maybe just fade in. So as I'm speaking about these steps one by one, they're gonna fade in accordingly. Also, because all of these behave as PowerPoint shapes, we can easily edit them. For instance, if I find this text to be a bit too small, I can easily make it a lot bigger like that. So we've seen how to use Napkin AI and how to export specific visuals, but what if you wanna export the entire report? For that, we just need to go over all the way to the top right and click on this share button. From here, we can easily share it as a link to somebody else, or we can also download it as a PDF. So far, we've been working on all of this data in English, but we can also change the languages. So you should know that it doesn't just work in English, but instead, if we go to auto detect, it can work in many other languages as well. That said, one final part I wanted to mention are the different styles. So right now, these are some of the built-in styles that we've been working with. They've got some professional looking ones like this dark blue too, but you can also create your own style. If I'm not mistaken, you're gonna need the premium version for that though. Up till now, we've been working with a report that we already had made in Word, but what happens if you don't even have a report? Can this AI tool actually make it for you? Well, we can click on new napkin and this time we'll go for draft with AI. This kind of works like ChatGPT and within it, let's just go for how to validate a business idea. Let's see what it comes up with there. I'm just gonna press on continue. And you can see instead of visuals, it's created all of this different text with the eight key things to validate a business idea. That said, I can select specific parts like this one right here and maybe turn that into a visual if I think it's necessary. I've got this kind of trumpet funnel, which I quite like. So let me go ahead and select that, see what it looks like. And if you maybe just want one visual to summarize the entire article, you can also do that. We're just gonna press Control A to select everything and then just press on this generate visual icon again. It should show something on the very bottom. So let me scroll all the way down and you can see we now have a huge visual as we have eight different steps. Next up, I wanna share with you the main problem I see with this tool and how it compares with other AI tools in the market. But first, if you want to learn in-demand data skills properly, I'd recommend you check out our data analyst program. It consists of five individual courses and over 350 lessons. First in Excel, you'll learn best practices for formatting formulas and charts. Then you'll apply your skills with real life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and create interactive dashboards. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting with other applications like Excel. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with the programming basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data on Los Angeles and even building our first regression model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VVA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PL reports, and much more. So click on the link in the description below to get started with our data analyst program. In my opinion, the main downside of Napkin AI is that you can't customize any of the client confidentiality or the privacy settings. If we compare that to maybe something like ChatGPT, you'll notice over here on the top right hand side, I can go to settings and I can make some important changes. For example, under data control, I can go to improve the model for everyone. And instead of having that on, I can turn that off, which basically means that you're not training their model. And so that way they're not gonna be using your data. 
that's not something that you can change in Napkin AI, at least for now. So for now, if you wanna use Napkin AI, I'd suggest just changing the name of the client so you don't have to go through this problem. And speaking of other AI tools, you might be wondering like, Kenji, why don't you just use ChatGPT instead of this Napkin AI tool? After all, ChatGPT does have some visuals too. Let's actually test it out and see how it works. So right now on this top part, I have the exact same prompt as I added inside of Napkin AI, and I'm just asking it to create a visual for this text above. Let's see what it comes up with. So it's been able to generate this visual, which I don't think is that bad. The problem is that you can't actually edit any of it. I can't go ahead and maybe change the number and bolden this part or delete this specific area. All of that you can't easily do. You can always ask it to convert it into a PowerPoint, but in my experience, it really doesn't work that well. A slightly better alternative for visuals is Claude AI. So let me show you what that looks like over here, just with the free plan. As you can see on the right hand side, it's really taking quite a lot of time to generate this visual as it seems to be programming it one by one. All right, so here it's generated the data and I don't know why it's done this thing on the bottom where it's going below zero and added this curvature. I don't think that's quite right. So you can see that overall, this is why I think Napkin AI can be a really handy tool for you. While it is really great for creating individual visuals, if you actually wanna go ahead and create a full-blown dashboard that's maybe interactive too, I'd recommend you watch this video over here to learn how to do that with AI, or you can take our Excel course over here if you wanna build a dashboard in Excel. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.